Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. In this lesson we talk about another V-Ray light type which is Dome Light. Uh, so from the V-Ray Bridge menu, Light and here is our V-Ray Area Dome Light. Uh, dome light is often used for image-based lighting or IBL. In this popular lighting method, you take a high dynamic range image or an HDRI and use it as your light source. So uh, when you create a dome light, you basically have a virtual spherical or hemispherical light source around your entire scene. Then you assign an HDRI image to that sphere or hemisphere and you would get a nice beautiful lighting which is based off of the color and intensity information from that texture that you have assigned to your dome light. Now before actually adding a very area dome light to the scene let me just get out this get out of this camera and as you can see we have this very simple house model uh, nothing too specific and this ground object and a very physical camera with some and see the ISO is set to 1600, the f-stop is set to 8 and shutter speed is set to 320. So uh, in this lesson we are basically going to show you how to approach exterior lighting in VRA for Cinema 4D and as we do so you'll learn how to use the VRA dome light. So from the VRA bridge menu go to the lights tab and add a VRA area dome light. Okay the first thing you need to do is to define the texture. So go to the area light tab and enable use texture. If you go to your text folder for the lighting, you can see uh, we have a map from the hdrmaps.com. Go ahead and visit their website. They have uh, tons of free high quality HDR images. Uh, so let me just go ahead and load this one and just make sure this is an actually let's just use a very advanced bitmap instead of a cinema 40 bitmap there you go now to see this texture in the viewport to adjust it and kind of adjust the angle that you want to see the image you need to go to your rear bridge menu and from the workflow you have this option called V-Ray dome light texture view so if you enable that and here in the texture preview size let's go to something like uh, 1024 now click on this preview texture, make sure you have the light that you want to see its uh, HDR image selected. So now click on this preview texture and you can see the HDR right here. So if I just click on this open window, you can see this is the HDR image we want to actually use, right? So let me get out of this camera so we can see the HDR a bit better. So this is the HDR that we want to use here. It's a very simple HDR. Right? Let me just get back to my camera and now select the light and I'm just going to kind of move it around until I see an angle that I actually like. Uh, probably something like this is nice. You can see this is the direction of the sun. Now what I want to do is just to uh, start the render and uh, before I start the render if I go to my render setting as I mentioned I have very bridge as my render engine and I have show EFB window. I'm using the progressive LED, uh, sampler and indirect illumination as you can see is enabled with irradiance map and light cache as primary and secondary G engines. So let's start the render here and see what we get. Okay, so here is what we are having by default and as you can see the sky is completely uh, blown out and it's very very bright and we can uh, kind of adjust the color mapping or work with our exposure uh, to uh, if I just go to my color correction here and if I enable my exposure you can see if I reduce the exposure we can actually see the sky a bit better so let me just turn up exposure and that's not too bad probably we can stop the render and if I go to my camera I can maybe reduce my exposure by uh, let's see 
maybe let's go to something like 400 for our shutter speed and if I render this scene we should get a kind of more well exposed uh, render or we can go to our V-Ray dome light and inside the HDR image that we have loaded we can adjust the exposure of this particular image to get exactly what we want right so as you can see right now we have this beautiful render uh, and we only added one HDR image to do the entire lighting and we get this very beautiful and realistic render without having to add uh, any other light when it would have been impossible to uh, achieve this level of realism uh, without using an HDR image so if I stop this render here let me also close this uh, if I select the dome light here, you can see we have a bunch of options. Uh, if you are using a full spherical HDR image and not an, a hemispherical image, right now we have this uh, spherical image, uh, you can actually enable this option that's called spherical dome. And if you do that, it doesn't really matter in this case because we cannot see the bottom half of this HDR image because of the ground plane that we have here. But if you want to use your full HDR image, you can actually enable this spherical dome as well so if i just render the scene we should have should receive the same exact image but if there wasn't for this ground plane uh you know we could have seen that uh, the bottom half of the image is also visible okay so there you go uh now another thing that we want to do when we are actually using hdr images with very for cinema 4d is to make sure that we help the HDR image to produce the right shadows. Right now you can see we have these very diffuse shadows uh, and the sunlight here doesn't produce those sharp shadows that we used to see uh, from the sun. So in this case we add a V-Ray uh, physical sun and sky, disable the physical sky because we already have a sky that was created using our very dome light and uh, that way the physical sun would help us to have sharp shadows so let's do that here let's stop this and now what we're going to do is add a v-ray physical uh, sun and sky and i'm going to the sunlight tab and as you can see just a simple infinite light nothing specific here i go to the sunlight and disable physical sky because we already have a sky so disable the physical sky and if you go to the top view, you can actually select the light and let me put it kind of, this is, you can see where we have the sun. It's right in front of the camera. So I'm going to put the light source right here, make sure it has the right height. So something probably like this will be just fine. Okay. And as you can see, we can also adjust it here. Now that we have this, I can go ahead and actually render the scene again and see what we're going to get. So right now you can see the sun is very, very bright. So let me just go to my, this is our dome light. Let me rename them also quickly. And this is sun. So I'm just going to select my sun and decrease it you can see intensity multiplier for the physical sky i'm just going to decrease this to something like three percent and render my scene again and see what you're going to get this time so here as you can see now we have the direct sunlight it's uh, very hard to actually see any shadows right now because uh, of this particular camera angle that we have if i just go ahead and actually duplicate this camera let me close this window here i can go for probably another angle maybe something like this to kind of see the shadows a bit better so if I start under again hopefully this time we can now actually see the shadows so there you have it you can see we have our shadows clearly let me just go ahead and stop the render. So this is a very kind of the basic process of doing uh, exterior lighting in very for Cinema 4D. If I go to my uh, V-Ray dome light again, you can see we have a bunch of other options. For example, we've got the mapping type, which defines 
how the HDRI will be mapped to this uh, virtual sky that we have created. So we got different, uh, based on the type of HDR that you're using, you have different mapping to use with that. Then we have this ground projection option here. And basically this uh, allows you to flatten the bottom part of the environment map into a virtual plane. And this is useful for rendering CG objects when you only have an environment map and not the backplate. And I'm going to be talking about this when we are actually talking about the materials and the uh, how to integrate your CG objects into your HDRI maps and stuff like that. At that point, we're going to be discussing this ground projection with examples. But for now, you need to know uh, that this is a very simple option to basically a uh, very useful option to integrate your objects with your uh, photographic backplates, right? Then we have this texture resolution, which we talked about. Uh, you don't have to kind of adjust it, but it's a good idea to uh, make sure it matches the resolution of the HDRI that you have defined up here. And we have this uh, photon target radius and photon emit radius that are uh, useful uh, when dealing with caustics. And basically the photon target radius is for the uh, dome light, uh, it defines a sphere around the light icon where photons are being shot when uh, photon mapped caustics or the global photon map are used. And photon emit radius down here is uh, for the dome light again to define a sphere around the light icon from which photons are being shot towards the target radius area. We talk about this when we actually discuss caustics effect, but for now, you just need to know the uh, what they are doing here. Now, if I go to the render we had, so if I go to my frame buffer, as I mentioned, you can change the exposure of your render after the render is done. And this is an HDR image, so you get all of that information. So you can see from uh, the, the very kind of defined sun here. And as we increasing the exposure, we get more light and more light. So you can use the HDR image to really light your scene for different times of day. And you can use different HDRs. For example, let us let me get back to my main camera here. And in this case, let's control drag and create a secondary dome light. And let's turn off our sun for now. And for this secondary dome light, let me just go inside my VR at one speed. And this time let's load this HDRI image from HDRI, uh, HDRI skies.com. You can go to their website and they have tons of free HDRIs that you can download. So I'm going to be using this one 281. So I'm going to just load this here. And this is the HDRI that we are having. And I'm just going to, let's say, increase the exposure. Let's try with something like 1.5. Select the dome light and click on this preview texture. And let me just rotate it until we get something that's actually nice. I don't know, maybe something like this. Can be beautiful. That's me. So let's render the scene and see what we are having. Okay, sorry, let's make sure our first light is turned off. Okay, and render the scene again. So there you have it. You can see we have an entirely different lighting situation by just changing the HDR image that we use to light our scene. And we can again go ahead and control the overall exposure. Let's maybe add some contrast here. Okay, there you have it. In this lesson, we talked about uh, dome light and exterior lighting in Verifor Cinema 4D. I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics, and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on 
Facebook, Twitter, and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.